Hello everyone. So today in this video, we'll actually go over the first two problems from the latest lead code bi-weekly contest 60. Cool. So the first problem is find the middle index in an array. What the problem is actually stating that you are given a uh, array nums and you have to actually find out the index such that the summation of all the numbers to the left of that index and the summation of all the numbers to the right of that index should be same. If you can find out such index, then print out that index. If there are multiple such indexes, print out the first one. And if there is no such index, print out minus one. Cool. So it is a very simple problem. You have to find out the sum of all the numbers to the left and right of a particular index. Okay. In O of one, you can assume. So what you can see here is that if you have some array, okay, what you can do is first initially find out the sum of all the numbers, all numbers. When you find out the sum of all numbers, let's assume it is hundred. You will again make one more variable, which is storing the left sum and one variable will be storing the right sum. Cool. Whenever you are on some index like this, when you are like you are on this index, the left has no elements, so it is zero. The right has all the elements except the current element. So and no, the current element is not included. So you have to exclude the current element. Okay, so total sum minus the ith element will give you the right sum. Cool. Now you will iterate to the next element. And now before it to the next element, you will add this element to the left sum. Okay. And now because you add this to the left sum, you have to subtract this from the right sum because the total sum, see, you have the total sum cool. And if you keep on adding to the left side, because you're moving like this, the total right will keep on decreasing by how much the right has decreased by this amount. So you have to decrease the right by this amount. And also this, this element is not included. So also exclude this element. So whatever element you are, exclude that element and the total sum minus the left half will give you the right half sum. And you can just compare it every moment, whether the right and the left, if they are same at any point, then you just print out that particular answer or else you have to print out minus one. Cool. So let's move down to the code part. Now it's not too difficult to understand. It's like just storing out the total sum. So first find out the total sum using this accumulate function. It's a function provided by the C++ STL. Uh, it actually takes the input of the begin iterator, the starting iterator of the vector, the ending iterator and the current total sum you have. The current total sum I have is zero. I have to add all of these numbers in what number? Zero. Okay. So it actually just stores the sum of all the numbers. You can just do a for loop also, but this is just a one liner code. Then left is a variable and right is also variable iterate over the whole vector from left to right as you can see and the right sum is equal to total accumulated sum minus left minus the current i okay then just check that whether the left and right becomes equal if they becomes equal at any point return the index at which you are else because now before moving down to the next point you have to add the current element i to the left side so that's what i've done so now left window is keep on increasing and the right windows keep on decreasing. Okay. And that's what we're doing. If you cannot find out any of such indexes, then print out minus one. Cool. You can like, like actually experiment on this code to even make it more understandable. You can just print out some, uh, debugger or actually print out some variables from each for loop to understand what is happening inside this. Code. Cool. Let's move on to the next problem. The next problem is find all groups of farmland. So this problem seems confusing at first, but it's not too confusing when you actually understand the logic and try to draw it out. It actually states that you are given a large M cross N binary index matrix. Okay. As you can see like this. Cool. Now there are some zeros and ones zero represent that it is a barren land and one represent that there is some crop or farm is there. Cool. So this is actually a farm area, this rectangle, this square or this square. Cool. Now what you actually have to find out here is that what are the top left index and the bottom right index of all these farms. The given condition in this problem is that no two farms are sharing a common edge. Cool. So I will tell you more with the drawing part to make it more clear. 
so let's assume that I have some farm this is the total land okay cool let's assume that uh, take a different marker that this is one of the farm which means that all of these uh, block values are equal to one cool now I cannot say that my another farm is this why because these two farms are sharing a common like edge this is not possible you cannot make two farms share a common edge okay then this is one uh, thing to be prohibited that I cannot do like this instead I can either make a farm like this or make a farm like this or just sp leave the space and make a farm like this no two farms can share a common edge like I cannot make a farm like this okay or I cannot make a farm like this or like this any of that cool so for all the farms you are given the values that they are all one cool and you have to print out the top left value because they are forming like a rectangle or square whatever you can say uh, then you have to print out the top left value and the bottom right value of all of these farms now how you can do that here is that the simplest way to proceed over this problem is to iterate from left to right and top to bottom over every block like just a doing of nested for loop and for whenever you find out a one like I find out a one here I know that this should be a beginning of a farm okay now what is the like dimension of this farm so what you can do here is because I find out the starting value of the farm okay because the farms will be like this so whenever I find out a one I know that this is the starting of some farm cool whenever I find out a one what I will do here is just move to the left till I find out once till I'm finding out once there is another one so move left so I will store some another iterator uh, or like pointer and like move to the left till I find out one and I will do the same thing till I find out of once in the bottom so it actually tells me that okay there is some square like this which is having all that because there is a dimension now they, they will be dimension like this so if there is one more one all of them will be one so I can just move down or move like right and find out actually the left and right dimensions the like the bottom dimension and the right dimension for this whole grid and I will know the starting point I can know the end point I can store it out but the catch is that let's say that I just move down to the next index which is this how I can say that this is not a starting point also I know that whenever I find out one this is a starting point but how can I say this is not a starting point this is also one but see this is not a starting point because this is inside a grid how we can tell that it is inside a grid the main catch is that any block should not be sharing a common edge this block is sharing a common edge with this one so for every one I have to check that it should, should not be sharing a common edge from the top cell and from the left cell if they exist because this cell exists and if this cell exists if both of these cell exist or whenever whatever cell exists and if any one of them is one then I cannot take this as a starting point because this cannot be starting point the starting point will only be having no addition cells equal to one because that's the starting point of this whole square okay and you cannot find out a square like this because if you are finding out the dimensions starting from this you cannot keep on going till right because uh, this cannot happen that two farms are sharing a common edge cool so that's the logic for this problem now let's move on to the code part we will make it more clear so what I have done here is that uh, this is the dimensions of the whole land n cross m this is the result vector to find actually like output out the uh, the final dimensions okay then iterate over this whole land from left to right top to bottom using two nested for loops whenever my ij is equal to one that I find out one particular starting point I have to check that whether if the i minus one block exists if it exists then if it is it should be equal to zero and if the top block exists it should be equal to zero both of these blocks should be equal to zero then it only can like make the sense that it is a like it's a starting point for the farmland then what I will do I will make two variables right for finding out the rightmost 
value for which this land exists or this farm exists and for a down value. I will keep on doing this while loop, checking that the next block exists and it is one going to the next block, checking the next block exists and going to the next block. Cool. And then after this, I will keep on adding my down and right till I find out the full dimension of the farm. And in the end, I know the starting dimension, which is IJ and the ending dimension, which is down, right? I will like push back this whole as a array inside this array or like this whole vector of vectors. Cool. And this will be whole printed out in the end and returned as a result. Okay. So I hope you understand the logic and the code part for this problem. See you in the next one. Then keep coding and bye.